this is chapter 9, section 4, called Arithmetic Series. Our learning objective is to define arithmetic series and find their sums. Before we get into the nuts and bolts, we have to define some words. So I've put it in a little table. Um, Anytime that you're taking notes on definitions, it's important to have the word in the definition, but I think the most important part is to have an example of that definition. So when you encounter it in the wild, you can identify it by bird watching. Just looking at the description in words when you're identifying species sometimes is not as powerful as having the picture. So, as you guys are going, I want to make sure you have examples of that. All right, so the first word we're going to define is a series. It is the sum of the terms of a sequence. So, we've been looking just at the sequences, and now we are going to, so if we have the sequence 5, 10, 15, 20, the series would be 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20. And then if you'd want to, if you find the sum, the actual sum of that series is 15. So there are two types of series that we're going to be hanging out with. One of them is a finite series, which means it has a first term, which is great, but it also has a last term, which is important. It, it has a beginning and an end. And you may be looking at me saying, I, that makes no sense. How can it just go on and on forever? Oh yeah. There are ones that do. That's the, it's like a line where a true line doesn't have dimension because it goes on forever. So a finite series would be like the one above where we go 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20. An infinite series continues without end. And the way we write those guys, we just go, it's the same, but at the end, we just go dot, dot, dot. The dot, dot, dot says forever. All right, so our arithmetic series is, we take what we know about an arithmetic sequence and we take our sequence and we add it together. So, for example, an arithmetic series would be 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 13. Where we have a common difference, we're increasing by the same added amount each time. All right, thankfully, Arithmetic series has a formula. So you don't have to go uh, 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 plus 9 is 15, and 15 plus 13, that's 28. So the answer is 28, which is easy to do when you have four terms, but when you have 200 terms, to add each of those terms together by hand would be really difficult. Thankfully, a crazy little man named Gauss, when he was 10 years old, figured out this formula. His little, um, he had, that back in the olden days, they had headmasters, so he was in class, and his um, teacher was, what just wanted some quiet time. And so he said, hey, you need to go write all the numbers from 1 to 100 and add them together. And so Gauss figured out that if you wanted to add or add 
sum all the numbers in an arithmetic series, all you would have to do is take the first term, add it to the last term, multiply it by how many terms you have, and divide by 2. He figured that out. He was 10. That's why I hate him. Because when I was 10, I was playing with my little ponies. Working their law maintenance. So A1 is the first term. AN is the last term. N is the number of terms. And the number two is the number two. So I read this as the sum of an arithmetic series with n terms is equal to the number of terms times the sum of the first and the last term divided by two. So let's apply that to an actual arithmetic. And this is the... Um, this only works for arithmetic, arithmetic series. So if you can't identify the common difference and don't know it's arithmetic and it increases by the same amount each time, you can't use this formula. Alrighty. So what is the sum of Four plus nine plus fourteen plus nineteen plus twenty-four plus dot 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 because I'm too lazy to write all of them plus a ninety-nine question mark. Okay, so this is two parts. Let me show you the first part, and in fact, I want this formula. There we go. Okay, so the first part I have to do is figure out which term is this. Which terms? I don't know, because when I'm finding the sum, I need that number to do the formula. I know my first term is 4. Oops. I need to figure that out because when I find the sum, I want to know, I have to know which term to use so I can use the formula. I know the first term is 4 and the last term is 99, and I know how to divide by 2. I'm missing that n. So I'm going to use what I know about the arithmetic sequence to find that n value. And because we just learned this, I won't leave you on the hook for arithmetic formula is the first term. So to find any term in my sequence, I take the first term and I add it to the common difference times n minus 1. So here I have to do a little detective work. I know my, the term I'm interested in is 99. I know my first term is 4. I know my common difference is, am I adding by each time? Bad. I have no idea what n is, that's what I'm calculating. I can do this simple algebra, algebra because I'm amazing at algebra. So I go subtract 4 from both sides. I get 95 equals 5, parenthesis n minus 1. I divide, both, I divide both sides by 5. 95 divided by 5. Well, I know what 100 divided by 5 is. That's 20. So 95 divided by 5 has to be 19. Totally mental math. I got this. 
n minus 1 is 19, so n has to be 20. So now I come up to here, I put the sum of the first 20 terms is 20 times 103, all divided by 2. And I like, I'm going to do this first because I know 20 divided by 2 is 10. Because I'm, I'm really anti-calculator right now. So the sum of the first 20 terms is 1,030. All right. So the series has its own notation. It's got its own little niche in life here. We go, so this is called summation notation. And aside from being weird Greek stuff, um, it does redeem itself because it rhymes. So, um, so the sum summation notation has this little guy. His name is a sigma. The way I remember it, it's a Greek symbol. Kind of looks like an E. It starts with an S. Sum starts with an S. Series starts with an S. Sequence starts with an S. Sequence, series, sigma, sum. All S's. That's how I remember. So, we have what's called a lower limit where it tells us which term in our sequence we're starting with. And we have an upper limit. tells us which term we're ending on. And then we're going to put the explicit formula right next to it. So, let's try to give you an example for that. What is the summation notation for negative five plus two plus nine plus sixteen plus dot 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 that's our forever. Uh, plus 261 plus 268. All right, let's lay that down. First, I know I'm going to have this crazy sign here, sigma. I know we are starting with the first term. Thank you very much. I have no idea in this sequence which term 268 is. So we're going to have to calculate that. And we're going to have to calculate the explicit formula. But that's okay, because we can do that all. Alright, so explicit formula wise, if we look, um, is this arithmetic series? Are we increasing by the same amount each time? Yeah, what's, what's our so we are arithmetic. Our common difference is 7. So when we put our explicit formula together, which looks like this, the first term plus d times n minus 1. So here I'm going to go, my first term is negative 5 plus 7 times n minus 1. Check, I got that box filled in. The other thing I'm missing is which term, what's my upper limit? So I have to go, if I know my last term is 268, and my explicit formula is negative 5 plus 7 times quantity n minus 1, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. 
3, then divide by 7, and I get 39, and then add 1. Awesome. I know that this is my 40th term. So we put 40 there. So the answer is this whole thing here. All right, so there is a one little piece of information that was hidden in this chapter that I want you guys to please have. I put a little star next to it. If the explicit formula is a linear function of n, then the series is arithmetic. And the slope is the common difference. What? Exclamation point. The explicit formula is a linear function of n, then the series is arithmetic, and the slope is a common difference. Doesn't it seem like we did linear equations days ago? Like three years ago? Which we did, but we also did at the beginning of this semester. So let me show you a little example of this. I like to put my explicit formulas in parentheses because then you know what goes with the sigma and what does not. Everything in the sigma is with the parentheses. All right, so the reason we did this whole little piece is because I needed to know um, when you're looking at explicit formulas, 3n minus 8. This is a linear function of n. Our slope is 3. So you can say that this is arithmetic. And that I can use the formula. To find the sum of the first 40 terms. So the whole reason we have this sentence is so that you can identify if the sequence is arithmetic or not. All right, so I want to find the sum of the first 40 terms. So my n value is 40. My first term, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what my first term is, so I have to find it. I do that by plugging in 1 for n. So 3 minus 8 is negative 5. So my first term is negative 5. And I need my 40th term. I do not have that, but I can find it by putting in 40, which is 120, my, uh, yeah, 120 minus 8. which is 112. And then it's just a calculator chug from there. One, negative five. Plus 112 is 107. You times that by 40 and then divide by two, you get 2,140. 
And that's the answer. All right, so the second example we're going to look at is the sum of the first term to the fourth term of n to the third power. So I have to look at n cubed. Is that a linear function of n, n to the third power? Can you or not? It's not. It's not linear. Linear would have to have a power of 1. So because it's not linear, we cannot use the arithmetic sum formula, but it's okay because how many terms do we have to add together? Four. That's not un unreasonable for us. So let's find the first four terms and add them all together. So I got 1 to the third is the first term, 2 to the third is the second term, 3 to the third is the third term, and 4 to the third is the fourth term. So this is 1 plus 8 plus 27 plus 64. And then you go 1 plus 8 is 9, 9 plus 27 is 36, 36 plus 64 is 100, booyah, done. <laughs>